Hello and welcome to Newsbreak Chats. Happy New Year sa inyong lahat. Ako si Chai Hofilenia, ang editor ng Newsbreak. Ito ang investigative at in-depth section ng Rappler. Napansin niyo ba, medyo mainit recently ang usap-usapan tungkol sa cha-cha or charter change. Meron pang ang ad na lumabas recently na tipong nagtutulak dito. Napanood niyo ba yung EDSA Puera? Siguradong may reaction dyan ang mga naging bahagi ng EDSA. Pero hindi cha-cha ang pag-uusapan natin kundi ang taong malamang na makikinabang din dito. Bukod pa siyempre sa obvious na si Pang- Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos Jr. Kilala natin siyang lahat da- dahil siya ang kaisa-isang pinsang buo ni Presidente Marcos na makapangyarihan din at very influential, si Speaker Martin Romualdez. Susubukan natin siyang higit na makilala care of two people na nagbabantay din sa kanya. Ang business reporter ng Rappler na si Ralph Rivas. Hi Ralph. Hi ma'am. At ang aming house reporter na si Casey Valmon- Valmonte. Hi, Hi Casey. Uh, welcome to Newsbreak Chat sa inyong dalawa. Kamusta naman ang inyong New Year? Meron ba? Meron. Masaya naman. Um, Umuwi ka ba? Umuwi ang probinsya. So, I'm back. Ready to work? Wow. <laughs> Recharged. <laughs> Recharged. Hey, ikaw, Casey. Got out of quarantine. Ah, nagkasakit ka. Yes. For how long? Um, from December 23 to 30. 23 oh, to 30. So, so talagang... Yung, <laughs> Oo nga. So, nag-notcho ba na po sa paper plate? <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you're ano, ready to go. <laughs> Raring to go, siguro. So, I'll start with you, siguro, kasi you cover Congress. Um, how would you characterize yung leadership, siguro, ni, ni Martin? Because media ka and then naka, nakatutok ka sa, sa house. Yeah. So, I started covering po, no, si... Um, Speaker Romualdez in late October. And parang I haven't seen him in a press conference yet. Um, he hasn't, at least from what I've seen, he hasn't graced um, any of yung media conferences. Uh, we haven't had the opportunity to um, get him in an ambush interview. And parang the first time that I saw him in a press con was during the Asia-Pacific Parliamentary Forum in Which November. Was November. Yes. And that was with um, Senate President Miguel Zubiri. And you can see how different yung rapport nila with like yung, yung kay uh, Senate President Zubiri and the Senate uh, reporters versus um, yung House reporters. Kasi parang mas may relationship, I guess, yung nakita ko na uh, si Zubiri with his reporters. Kasi um, kinakamusta niya, kamusta yung food, kamusta yung press room, yung office, etc. Versus yung medyo malayo, I guess, yung relationship ng reporters. Kayo. Kilala ba niya kayo by first name? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, he will. He, he will, will soon. Uh-oh. With your stories. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Kasi I remember, nung bata akong reporter, yung house speaker noon, talaga nag invite siya sa bahay, and then kilala niya by, by first name yung mga, yung mga reporters. Kasi ang daming house reporters, di ba? So mm-hmm. parang, very, very politiko yung, yung speaker. But Martin Romualdez seems to be different. No? Yes. <laughs> so, yung ano, parang interesting din, um, tamang-tama, noong December, there was a Pulse Asia survey na, na lumabas. And kung titingnan, kung magfo-focus tayo kay, kay Romualdez, kay Martin, merong pluses and minuses in his ratings in terms of trust and approval. So, balikan ko lang yung numbers. Sa trust niya, he got 40%, which is less than half, diba? 50%. Tapos, uh, slightly higher ito compared to some, to September, parang 2% lang yata, if I, if I recall correctly. Tapos, yung distrust rating hindi nagbago, 14%. And then, 39% ang approval, slightly lower, I think also 2 percentage points. So, konti lang, minimal. And then, 13% disapproval and overall, 48% undecided on his performance na tumaas pa uh, compared to September. What do you what do you make of this? Is this good kung kung if you are his PR person, is this good for him? Is this bad for him or wala lang unchange? Okay, I think yung so 48% undecided no kasi um I think the survey one of the parang one some of the things that were on the news cycle then were yung confidential funds issue, tsaka yung house um, at least warming up to the idea of 
like having the government support um uh, having the government welcome the ICC for an investigation. So I think people then were like not sure um if this was a genuine um effort ng House of Representatives and yung members niya or if this was some sort of politicking. Um but I think it's also uh ayun, he doesn't have much at least appearances. Yeah. And ayun, people are it's an opportunity kasi people don't know where he stands yet. Like you that can you can, <laughs> you can <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and, and, and let me add no kasi uh lumaki ako sa Davao. So mm-hmm. I na uh, I grew up, you know, my my relatives absolutely admiring the Dutertes. So here comes, you know, Speaker Romualdez breaking that image of the Dutertes, the, the Duterte clan. So parang medyo I think do, I feeling ko doon ang gagaling yung pagiging undecided. Parang o parang ano bang nangyayari sa kanila? I mean, di ba? I mean, I think ito yung uh, reality check ng public na parang yung unity talaga is and that reflects on uh, the surveys na yung unity is not so united after all. Yeah. I think we can try to interpret what his actions are but until he like gives you a statement or gives a clear view of what he wants to happen parang up until now people will like have questions about ano ba yung gusto mong mangyari and where do you stand in all of this so there's been no chance for the media yung nagco-cover ng house to sit down with him and ask him the tough questions mm-hmm. para ma- malaman where he stands on on these issues yes ba? when when sometimes when we or when some of the reporters would ask follow up questions for example in our viper group um, they would respond, pero parang pili lang yung issues na ina address. Like, um, sinasagot niya. Sinasagot nila if like it's about inflation, yung masasabi niya, oh, may ginagawa yung house. Um, pero when it came to kunyare, Duterte was quote, Duterte was attacking uh, the House of Representatives. Mm-hmm. Um, I think na una pa mag issue ng statement yung political party leaders in the House of Representatives instead of him um, directly responding. Is that good or bad? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. What I can say is uh, the public has a clear image kung sino ang mga Duterte. Uh-oh. Pero kapag uh, si, si Speaker Romualdez, anong image yung nakoconstruct mo? Parang wala, wala masyado eh. <laughs> Hindi klara, Duterte, uh, ano ba? Mm, Tough. The, the tough, the ano, and then Sarah is also the tough, pero may ibang toughness mm-hmm. yung ano sa kanya, di ba? Parang may certain tenderness, di ba? Parang she's also viewed as a mother, yes. may ganun din. Yes. And then uh, Baste and Pulong also have their own images. So, medyo malinaw na yun. I mean, uh, in Davao, that was clear. And when uh, uh, Duterte became president, it became clear at the national level. So I think yun yung I think dito nag uh, rare result kung bakit ganito yung numbers ni Speaker Romualdez. But uh, ako uh, yes parang merong um, parang people are undecided, are not sure about what are you really, what do you stand for. Pero uh, itong 48% na to, parang I don't know if you if you share the 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 view parang it also means it's an opportunity for him to to define himself. Mm-hmm. Kung baga, kung baga hindi, hindi totally ayaw namin sa iyo. Pero yeah. ito, sino ka ba? Magpakilala ka. Parang mm-hmm. ganon. Kasi the distrust is ano ba? Uh, the same lang. Uh, 14%, right? Uh, let me review again. 40% trust. Uh, 40% trust. And then same distrust ratings at 14%. Oo. So, di ba? Hindi Parang, nagbago. Yeah, hindi nagbago. Ang kapansin-pansin daw is the Visayas. Parang kung, kung i-review mo yung, ano, yung, yung numbers, talagang imagine 23 percentage point drop ang, ang bagsak in the Visayas. Sorry, 23 percentage point drop ang approval, ang approval rating, tapos pati yung trust, bumagsak din, bumaba rin ng ng 11 percentage points. And yet, tagalite ang mga Romualdez, di ba? You would expect na daily week nila yon. How would you explain this kaya? 
<laughs> Mahirap. I mean, ako, yung naiisip ko lang is, what, anong ginawa ng mga Duterte, for instance, for uh, Romualdez to have this drop? That's the question. I think dun lang, yun yung that's more of questions rather than a possible answer. Diba? Casey, meron ka bang? And perhaps to that, no? If may ginawa yung mga Duterte, what did Romualdez not do? Yes. yes, right. So it's him not, perhaps not taking the opportunity to do something to show na, you know, I'm this kind of leader versus Duterte showing up and defining themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about in business community, Ralph? Parang anong sense mo? How do they regard the speaker? Mm, so from the years I've been covering the business community, no, uh, yung image na gusto nalang i-portray is that magkahiwalay ang business and politics. Politics is just noise and then we go about our daily business, making money, things like that. So separate. Pero that's not really the case. Mas sismoso pa sila kung ano. <laughs> kapag, uh, ito, nung, kapag Christmas party, di ba? Uh-huh. Kapag business reporter ka, kailangan mo umatend ang Christmas party. Kasi maraming chika. Kasi marami, doon sila mas ano there's alcohol involved <laughs> so medyo yun yung ano opportunity for you to ano talk to ano some of the richest people who you only get to meet uh, during christmas parties and annual stockholders meetings mm. so dun lang so uh, mas doon sila mas nakikita mo na parang microcosm din sila of philippine society that they are they want to listen and gusto nilang kumampi kung sino ang malakas. So, in this case, everybody wants to get on the good side of Speaker Romualdez. Kasi, uh, ano ba, of course, negosyante rin si Speaker Romualdez. Marami siyang negosyo, although that doesn't appear in official papers. Mm. no. Pero, uh, he has not denied it nor confirmed it. And, uh, from my coverage, I received very interesting calls. Let's put it that Sige way. Sige <laughs> so, ki- What kinds of I can't, comments? I can't, from... I can't reveal na kung ano yung kasi yung calls. Pero it, basically, ang masasabi ko doon is, uh, ano ba, in the right direction, kung saan ako tumitingin, mm-hmm. kasi may nagre-react eh. Yes. So, yun, yun ang nasisense ko, especially with kung ano yung mga legislation na pumapasa or kung ano yung kumikilos. They're keeping an eye. Uh, mining, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're expecting a rally. Uh, the stock, Philippine Stock Exchange is expecting a rally on mining, for instance, because of that. Sige, Ralph. Uh, I remember you You did this two-part series nga on, on Martin Romualdez and yung, yung businesses niya. So, syempre, before we, we go into that, if and in case people have not read that story, the two-part series, you should, uh, if you want to get an insight into the speaker. Uh, pero was it easy to to put together that story? At saka paano mo paano mo naisip? Pinag-usapan niyo ba sa cluster ninyo or was this your own initiative? Well, I think uh unang lumabas na sobrang laki ng influence speaker Romualdez because of uh, what happened in Okada, Manila. Kasi na name name drop siya eh. So uh Mahaba-habang kwento yung Okada, Manila. So please read my stories na lang. No? Pero basically, may nag na dalawang board, nag And then, one side accused na the other na gumamit ng connections through Speaker Romualdez, supposedly. And then, uh, the House Speaker allegedly called up uh, officials, uh, uh, justice officials, no Supreme Court, supposedly, allegedly, uh, so yun, uh, doon tumakbo. And then, uh, yung... Okay, sorry, this is really complicated. I'm really oversimplifying things Sige at this lang. point. Pero, napag-alaman ng isang korte ng US na hindi naman naging very influential si Speaker Romualdez. Uh, may attempts lang to use that. Uh, pero, may makikita ka rin na influence. Kasi, uh, Kazuo Okada is out of Okada, Manila. So, yun naman yung goal ng other side. To so, get him out. To get him out. So, uh, did the speaker have a hand in that? Um, we don't know. You can only speculate. You can only speculate. Mm-hmm. So, doon pa lang, uh, kita mo kung sino-sino yung mga 
uh, yung board how how they supposedly uh, try to get connections mm -hmm. to, to be connected with uh, Speaker Romualdez. If if people will read your story, it's very it's very thorough. Tapos ang dami daming I imagine ang daming dokumento ang dinaanan mo. So how did you how did you put this story together? So kunyari, if I were a young reporter, ay gusto kong gawin yung katulad ng ginawa ni Ralph Rivas. Paano, paano, how do I even start? The stories don't come from the official documents. So I think yun yung number one lesson sa mga gusto mag-person nito. Kasi uh, the best, uh, Speaker Romualdez's name does not appear on the uh, uh, SEC documents. Mm -hmm. So, galing lang yan sa sources na parang, oh, ito, ano ito, uh, Romualdez Company ito. And uh, kung even the business circles din eh, parang, ah, oo, okay, sila din nag-confirm mismo. Mm -hmm. Na parang, ah, yes, uh, this is a Romualdez backed company because, uh, hirap pag sarita <laughs> 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 pero, pero, pero yun na rin, yun na rin yan eh, basically, eh, hindi yung, yung confirmation does not come from the official documents. So, based on that, kinumpile lang natin, uh, and this effort was not really on my own. This was an effort from other journalists as well, uh, from other news outlets na pinagtagpi-tagpi natin. And then we have a clear picture now kung ano yung business empire niya so far, what has been discovered. So nandyan ang mining, uh, there's a holding company that has invested in uh, uh, a joint venture with ABS-CBN. That's why we have, you know, DWPM radios sa Istrenta. So, uh, yun. And, uh, ano pa ba? Things to watch out for. May banks din, di ba? Uh, yes. Banko, uh, mining, yung sa... infrastructure, mm -hmm. and yun know, nga, media. Mm -hmm. um, Casey, nung nabasa mo yung fantastic story ni Ralph, mm -hmm. parang ano yung naging reaction mo as somebody covering the speaker? Actually, well, I thought it was interesting uh, in a sense that you can see how or where his ambitions are beyond, you know, his political plans. That was he's very consistent. I think like moving quietly, like di mo makikita yung pangalan niya in the documents, and you can see how much power he holds over power influence he holds over these people or companies. Because I noted, parang uh, si Ralph would write na Rappler talk to sources who do not want to be named, so you can <laughs> only assume mm -hmm. na parang what would happen to them no, if the, you know, you're know you going against the speaker with that much power and influence. And it's interesting as well, no? kasi uh, yung before he became speaker, mm -hmm. he was really, I mean, just another lawmaker, di ba? Parang una lang siyang lumabas nung... Uh, uh, supposedly, siya yung nagpa-dinner sa New York, di ba, mm, with yes. uh, uh, then uh, President Gloria Arroyo. And uh, it was sort of insensitive kasi kakamatay lang ni late uh, President Cory. So, napakamahal ng dinner. So, doon lang ulang na uh, napunta sa radar ng media at ng taong bayan na may sino itong new person doing maneuvers. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of leadership, mm -hmm. parang, what are your insights? Parang having um, spoken with him, kahit na limited um, opportunities, and also having done um, intensive research about him. Uh, ano ba to? Yung, yung, yung picture nga is, ano, di ba? A speaker who, is, who has full control and influence and expanding influence. Siya ba yung bagong Pacman na kumbaga si Dan din ko huwag ko before? Siya, siya ba yung ngayon, yung bago? Mm, I think uh, the ano there is yung tanong ng mga tao ngayon, who's the new Dennis Uy? Kasi mm -hmm. yun yung mm -hmm. sa ano diba, the Duterte admin, kung sino kasi lahat yeah. na kay Dennis Uy din eh. Pero you know what's happening with Dennis Uy now, he's selling assets. Mm -hmm. Kasi you know masyadong debt ridden yung acquisitions niya. So I think yun din, I mean, it's still early into the Marcos administration, pero there's always the question, sino ang mga bagong negosyante or politiko na makikinapang? And is that Speaker Martin Romualdez? Mm -hmm. I think that's still a question that uh, the business community is asking. Mm -hmm. And uh, yung follow-up dan, dyan, siyempre, is 
how can they benefit? At ko ano ang possible partnerships. Curious ako, I'll, I'll just backtrack a bit. Yung business community ba, uh, ano yung sentiment nila about Chacha? Uh, the, in previous, no, I mean, I'm still working on that story. No, uh, I'm parsing through the ver- past statements that yes. they've made, the b- various business groups. But in general, they want to open up the economy. Mm. I think hanggang doon lang. They don't want the political aspect of it. Uh, may, in so many words, parang kapag halimbawa, kapag federalism yung pag-uusapan, ayaw talaga nila noon. Kasi parang madidecentralize yung corruption. <laughs> kind of, you know, mas mahirap i-control. Mas mahirap i- ano, mas marami silang kausap, kakausapin, Correct. things like that. Pero yun, but then again, uh, the Duterte administration has somewhat opened up the economy already. And uh, ngayon, uh, Finance Secretary Ben Diokno mm-hmm. even emphasized that earlier this year, uh, earlier last year, 23. No, uh, 23, na the Philippine economy is already open even without charter change. But more can be done. Basically, yun yung gusto niyang sabihin. Casey, ano yung, what do you see na dapat bantayan? Especially since hindi nga ganun ka-open or transparent to the media si, si speaker. I think it's closely watching what his allies in Congress are doing, like what are the bills being prioritized and how um, they act in like house increase, etc. The statements that they make, because that's when that's how you'll see ko ano yung priority nila. For example, when they did a probe on SMNI, um, may yung speeches ng congressmen at first took offense for Romualdez, no? So you can see na. Well, last year, and dami kasi nag jump ship from PDP Laban to Romualdez's uh, Laka CMD. So, alam mo na, they know that Romualdez might be the next big thing. So, they're placing their bets on him already. At as early as now, na wala pa tayo sa kalahati ng administration. Is he a good whip? Kasi, di ba, ganun naman in, in, in the house, di ba? Mm-hmm. Parang... Uh, traditionally, it's always been the president working very closely with the speaker so that the agenda of the president is implemented by, by the House, which is the number. Um, is he able to do that? Parang corral people and the other members of Congress and say, this is, this is legislation that needs to be passed. Ito yung priorities. Dito tayong lahat. Yes, I think so. Kasi parang mag-release lang siya ng statement or a speech, the next week it's become the priority, or the next month meron ng inquiry or investigation. So P- he really knows na he can do something with like a snap of his finger. Like he can make things happen. And is it because by sheer power of his position or charisma ba? Meron bang ganon? I think it's a mix of both. Because when you actually see him and parang like, um, I guess observe how he interacts with people. You can see how charismatic he is, like bros siya with people. Um, with Zubiri, parang sobrang close nila and all, like there was camaraderie that I noticed. Mm-hmm. But not the GMA anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, they took a photo together. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> uh-uh. yeah. If we were to project what what to expect and what to happen in, in 2024, given what we've seen so far, latter part of, of 2023. Um, what would be your fearless forecast, both sa siguro economy, business, at saka politics? Mas magiging malinaw this year mm-hmm. uh, kung anong gusto mangyari ni Speaker Waldes. Ngayon pa nga lang, eh, uh, nakastart pa lang ng taon uh, yung maharlika at saka invest, possibly investing into NGCP. Mm. Diba? So, that's a clear indication na. Uh, Mr. Kunsing said na he's uh, considering the recommendation mm-hmm. of Speaker Romualdez. So, that's very telling. Mm-hmm. Eh, prior to all this, yung maharlika, yung question is, saan pa mag invest tong maharlika? Napakaraming pera, baha ng pera. Tapos, isa sa mga lumutang doon is, ah, hindi mag invest yan ng shares or stake. Kailangan infrastructure, mm-hmm. kailangan concrete. Tapos biglang, oh, NGCP, wala naman yan sa infrastructure plan. So it's basically, uh, ano ba to? Uh, share sale? Possible? Uh, ano bang, we don't know kung ano pang mangyayari. And then may jeepney modernization pa na yeah. nababanggit. Mm. So, that's definitely uh, on our list for this year kung saan mapupunta ang pera ng Maharlika. 
and kung how influential is uh, the speaker pagdating dito. Uh, the role of China, for instance. Yes. So, yan din yung aabangan, anong relasyon. Outside the Colombo na ba ang China? Ah, based <laughs> dun sa ano. <laughs> based on what we're seeing, I think that's the direction. How about you, Casey? For us, I think it's whether, like, yung efforts to pursue charter change will actually succeed this time. Kasi parang, last oh, December... Oh, damn failures. Yeah. <laughs> never succeeded. And like, last December lang nila sinabi na, we'll prioritize it this year, pero we'll try it through the people's initiative. And then now, parang kakasimula nga lang na to, ang dami ng parang dirty politics, bribery, uh, being reported surrounding yung efforts to get the like public sign the petition to get yung amendments for the constitution. So, how far will our politicians go to make sure na this time mangyayari na yung charter change? And parang, sino yung makikinabang? Or rather, sino yung hindi makikinabang dito? Parang, sino yung uh, mapapatalsik? Or uh, bababa pa dun sa political chain? Mm-hmm. Kasi ang nagpo-push din ngayon is the same group that pushed for it nung panahon ni FDR, di ba? Pirma, pirma pa rin. So it's... It's really disappointing kasi maganda sa ating intention ng People's Initiative pero here comes 100 pesos lang daw yung pirma. Parang ano ba naman? 100 pesos lang. Parang people naman, let's ano, <laughs> let's do, ano. Especially at the time na ang taas ng inflation, yun yung concern ng, ng ordinaryong tao, masaya ka na ba sa 100 pesos? So, will Romualdez, will, will the speaker become um, prime minister under a parliamentary <laughs> form of government? Magsasucceed ba ito? Ano uh, palagay niyo? Oh, he says na that's not the priority, na parang why they want to pursue charter change, because it's all for the economic provisions ng constitution. But, you know, you can say things... <laughs> Mm. And it's really important to note na hindi ang uh, openness to foreign investments yung hindrance on our growth. Mm-hmm. Ang napakaraming, ano, I mean, uh, nag-open na yung economy, marami ng provisions throughout the Duterte administration na naipasa, yet investments, bumababa. Buma, buma so anong reason? That's not it. It's what? Corruption, governance, high cost of power, uh, ano pa ba? Maraming... Uh, confluence of factors. At hindi lang basta-basta na parang binuksan yung ekonomiya, magdadatingan na yung mga yan. I mean, look at the world right now. May, <laughs> may gera. Parang sino? Parang, di ba? Hindi lang so, siya basta gano'n. So, kumbaga, for, for 2024 then, parang for media, ano yung mga stories that we should be on the lookout for? Hmm. Ako parang... Ano pala ito? Session ng... <laughs> Hingiya na, ano? Hingiya na, hingiya na outlook. <laughs> mm, ano ba? So, tututukan mo pa rin. Of course, ikaw kasi house eh. Di ba? Where the alliances are. Yes. And how those alliances, you know, have implications sa business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how about business? Para, kasabi mo nga, business and politics. Hindi mo yan, hindi mo yan ma- mahihiwalay. Well, yung, of course, yung ganitong klaseng endeavor, kailangan ng pera yan. So, sino, who's gonna who's fund? Who's going to fund? So, yeah, that's the big question. Okay, sige. So, this is really a, parang an evolving, developing topic. We will see if they will be able to push it. Ano bang timetable nila? Uh, dapat by the next sauna, there should be there should be something, no? and they, they should be able to deliver signatures to get 20 million ba yung yung pangako supposedly. Well, we'll see. Uh, yan na lang muna siguro for for today's discussion. Bilis ang na oras. Pero syempre, obvious na hindi natin bibitiwan yung yung issue at patuloy na magbabantay si Ralph at saka si, si Casey. Hindi ko nga alam kung may part 3 ka pa. <laughs> <laughs> Tingnan natin. <laughs> Tingnan natin, di ba? Uh, so, babantayan um, nilang dalawa, pabantayan din ng Rappler ang patuloy na, na developments. So we'll also encourage you, our viewers and listeners, we'd like to encourage you to download the Rappler Communities app. Punta lang kayo sa um, 
kung depende kung iOS or um, Android yung inyong phones, you, you go to your the respective app stores and, and download wrapper communities. Um, that's where we can continue this conversation. So whether that's Google Play or, or Apple Store, nandun yung, yung Rappler app. You can join the Philippine Politics channel, but ibang chat channels ang nandoon sa community community app na yon, and you can join the the discussion. I'm Chai Hofelenia, and this has been Newsbreak Chats. Thank you very much for tuning in.